My college takes star signs way too seriously. Is that understood? The college dean was lecturing me and I was staring down at my lap trying to fathom how I got myself in this situation. I had guards standing behind me acting like I was some escaped psychopath. Every time I moved, I noticed them snap to attention in the corner of my eye. I was supposed to belong here. I was supposed to find myself. But all that I had found was a student body that was deadly serious about separating their students according to their zodiac. My gaze flicked to an astrology chart on the wall, with the school's least favorite sign scribbled out in permanent marker. The dean's office was an astrologer's wet dream. The dean herself was my mother's age, a scowling woman who was more shadow than person, a projector illuminating constellations across the room, casting her face in an eerie white light. I had been lazily following Orion across the walls when she finally snapped, and I jerked to attention, my gaze flicking back to her. Miss Oliver. I nodded in response, my cheeks burning. Orion skimmed across her face and I found myself mesmerized by how beautiful the star was. Her office was a fairly cozy, a messy kind of cozy. There were books and papers piled around her, empty coffee mugs and what looked like star maps spread across her laptop, coffee staining each corner. It was a mistake. I finally sat through the gutter in my throat. It wasn't a mistake, but it's not like I could say that. For some reason, along with this college's draconian rules mapped around the zodiac of all things, there was one star sign in particular that had been outcasted. I turned my attention back to the scribbled out symbol, Gemini. If there was ever a zodiac that was hated or not liked, Gemini was never that star sign. I grew up with kids in my class hating Pisces because they refused to be related to a fish, or a cancer because of the crab. Gemini was in these summer months and the constellation in my opinion was beautiful, but not to these guys. Starting my freshman year, I started to realize how badly the Gemini students were being treated, with the guys getting the worst of it. Being a late admission, I was new along with another kid who appeared to be the joker of the class at first. He was friendly enough, introducing himself with a grin. We were asked for our star signs as an icebreaker, or what I thought was an icebreaker, and he shrugged with a small smile. Um, I think I'm a Gemini. He sounded unsure of himself, leaning back in his chair. Yeah, I was born on June 10th. I'm a Gemini. I expected that to be the end of it, but I noticed a sudden shift in the air. Like the guy that had just announced that he had murdered his whole family. And the girl sitting next to him inched away slowly, dragging her laptop with her. While the rest of the class seemed to collectively let out a breath before twisting to the back of the class. It was almost a robotic movement their heads snapping around, eyes narrowing. I didn't even see them. The four students in the shadows, heads bowed over their MacBooks. The professor's expression seemed to crumple, his eyes darkening significantly. I think he spoke in a sharp breath before seemingly collecting himself. I think you should join your friends at the back, he said coldly. Until then, the professor had stapled himself as a cool teacher. A man in his early 40s sporting a long trench coat over jeans and a t-shirt. Very chic. But now it was like looking at a different person. He took slow steps back across the stage, almost stumbling. I could almost mistake his expression for fear. I said... The professor's voice broke around the words and something ice cold wriggled its way down my spine. I think you should join your friends. The Gemini kid seemed baffled and a little hurt. The air was thick, every eye burning into him. I felt like they were looking at me too. 
The professor's eyes were wide, lips curled like he might say something, but he just shook his head, seemingly gathering himself. I'm confused. The kid laughed nervously, almost jumping out of his chair when a girl behind him kicked his bag across the floor. He sent her a questioning look. Is, is this some kind of joke? Now, the professor wasn't even looking at him. But, the boy tried to laugh. It's just a star sign, right? I will not ask you again, the professor said stiffly. He didn't move as if doing so would mean being closer to the boy. He folded his arms across his chest. If you do not move to your designated seat right now, then you're out of my class. To my surprise, the boy got up and moved to the back, ignoring students cringing away from him. He didn't speak again, sticking to his assigned group. I noticed that everybody else had been separated into their zodiac signs. Leos were at the front, with Sagittarius and Libra surrounding them, and the other star signs were harder to make out. I thought it was just that class who were taking the zodiacs a little too seriously. But no, this thing had spread across campus like a virus. Students didn't care about their grades or what careers they were going to get. Because these star signs and the top of the social hierarchy had the faculty wrapped around their little fingers. A Libra girl found out that she was no longer compatible with the Scorpio and stopped talking to him completely. Ghosting him on social media and going as far as moving halfway across the classroom from him. The entire campus had gone crazy, including the faculty. But it was only certain star signs who were allowed extra credit and invited into exclusive clubs while the rest of us were left in the dust. And Geminis were either treated like dirt or feared, like they were carrying a contagious disease. It was like going back to middle school. In the sixth grade, I was proud of my star sign. I liked to think that I had a secret twin after learning about the story behind the constellation. Castor and Pollux, twin brothers transformed into Gemini. I used to draw the twins on the back of my hands, daydreaming my very own. Mina Lucas, a Pisces, called me two-faced, because Gemini had two faces. And so I called her an ugly fish. This was middle school, though. It is normal for kids to build personalities around their star signs. But for college students, however... They're grown adults. It was fine to base a crush around a star sign or compatibility, but your whole life, your social circle and education. It was bad enough that my classmates were brainwashed by stars, but the professors too. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense that my roommate had a mental breakdown the night before because she didn't have anything blue to wear. According to her star sign, she had to wear blue to have a good day. Geminis were either mercilessly bullied by students and professors alike, or treated like they were invisible. I had noticed over the last few days that disgust had turned to fear. Instead of bullying Geminis, other students stared clear of them. I saw it contorted on every face, wary of the Gemini sitting near them and presently, I saw it on my dean's face. She was scared of me. The woman may have seemed in control, but I noticed her finger anxiously tapping on her coffee mug, her gaze flashing to and from the clock on the wall. She was waiting for something, her demeanor tense, her eyebrows furrowed. Every passing minute seemed to unnerve her even more. A mistake. She repeated my words, her tone dripping with sarcasm. Yeah, I didn't look her in the eyes, wiping my clammy hands on my jeans. What was I supposed to say? I didn't want to associate myself with what I thought was a trend, a TikTok thing that would fizzle out like everything else. But I was staring down at a handwritten letter crumpled between my fists of an anonymous tattletale calling out my real star sign. The crossed O's stood out. Who wrote like that? 
I had been hiding under the facade of being a Sagittarius since Sagittarius and Leo seemed to be the it signs. They stood on some pedestal ruling over campus like some messed up clack. The letter was like a slap in the face. I had half a mind to tear it into pieces. I stared down at it, my eyes stinging. This letter told me that I didn't belong here. It told me that because the brainwashed hive mind on campus had decided to collectively despise the star that I was born under, that I was something to be feared, like an animal. Who sent it? I managed to get out. I squeezed the paper between my fist. Dearest Dean, in the passive-aggressive tone made my blood boil. I would like you to know of a traitor amongst you, a Sagittarius by the name of Oliver, who was in fact a Gemini. I am so sorry for ruining your day. Anonymous. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. When I looked up, the Dean's glare was pinpointed directly in the middle of my forehead. If looks could kill. I don't know what to say, I squeezed out. She hummed. Well, you can start by explaining yourself. She had to be kidding, right? No, when I looked her dead in the eye, this woman was being serious. Miss Oliver, I am horrified that you would disguise yourself as a Sagittarius. She curled her lip. As one myself, I should have sensed that her energy was wrong, polluted with her presence. But I let my guard down. I slammed the letter down this time. This woman was certifiably insane. Who sent this? I said again, this time harsher. That is none of your concern, the dean said. You lied, Miss Oliver. About my zodiac sign, I sucked in a breath. It's really not a big deal. Her eyes darkened. As you will discover, Miss Oliver, it is extremely important that we know where every Gemini is. Her gaze flashed to her MacBook screen, especially when certain measures have been put in place. Measures? I straightened to my seat. What kind of measures? Her lip curled. You are a late arrival. It is your fault for not arriving on time. You're kidding. I found myself speaking through a scoff. I was done. It was one thing with students doing this, but grown adults. She was enabling this bullying, inciting a fear that shouldn't exist. It was like being on a playground and some stupid kid pronouncing that Gemini smelled and the rest of the kids following along, forming a hive mind. But this was a 40-something year old. The dean couldn't justify it, and even if she tried, she would be declared insane. I leaned forward, testing the boundaries. I wasn't surprised when the dean lurched back. Was it a bad experience? She blinked. I don't understand. A bad experience you had, I repeated, with a Gemini. I could sense the words suffocating my mouth, eager to slip out. After weeks of feeling like I was back in the sixth grade, finally confronting the root of the problem felt good. Platonic or maybe sexual, I inclined my head. Or maybe he or she ghosted you completely. So you brainwashed a campus full of impressionable young students to punish people who cannot help being born between the months of May and June. I felt satisfaction when her expression twisted. Because that is all it is, what you're all unhealthily obsessed with. I spoke through my teeth this time, weeks of repressed anger bubbling over. They're just stars, I said. They don't mean anything to anyone except children. Miss Oliver. See? Tracing along the constellation mapped out on her desk, I prodded each static light. To my confusion, it was the Gemini constellation which was ironic. I stabbed at the two twin stars, Castor and Pollux, and then Alhina. I nodded to Orion projected across the wall. Stars, they're just stars, dead and dying planets are if you're religious. Your long dead relatives, whatever. 
I pointed at the map crinkled under a MacBook, and the Dean once again flinched, her body angling its way away from me. She leaned away from me like I was contagious. One of the guards started forwards, no doubt to grab me, but she shook her head, maintaining that professional, if not slightly strained, smile. There's no need. The Dean spoke in a sharp breath, and the guard stepped back. Miss Oliver is understandably upset, she cleared her throat. Please vacate your current dorm and move into the old building across campus where we house Geminis without rooms. The dean stood before I could reply. I don't expect to see you in my office again. I grabbed my bag, getting to my feet. You're not throwing me out. Her lip twitched. We do not suspend Gemini students, Miss Oliver. But what if I want to leave? Her facial expression didn't waver. I'm afraid that's not possible. I nodded slowly, not completely registering her words. So you're saying that I can't leave? She shook her head. I'm afraid not. I glanced at the guard behind me. Why can't I leave? Because of the measures in place. Something warm wriggled its way up my throat and I tried to speak before the guards were politely shoving me out of her office. The dean's words didn't leave my mind until I was halfway across campus and out of breath and regretting every word that I had spat. She had sent me away with a warning and in order to leave my dorm room effective immediately and move into the old building off campus. I had seen it in passing, a large crumbling structure which used to be the old student dorm. The door was broken, bars on the windows. There was no way that I was staying there. Instead, I figured a couch crashing in a friend's dorm would be better. Al was a Leo and insisted that she didn't care about star signs. Coming from a Leo that was rich, she had the all-exclusive Leo experience. I was moving into a room later into the evening, playing cloak and dagger with these security guards on shift, when the announcement played on the intercom. Starting from 8pm, please lock all Geminis in the rooms. It is upon us. Elle froze up, her eyes widening. Until that moment, she had been unusually quiet, the two of us sitting cross-legged on the floor eating Chinese food but I thought that she was just tired from classes. Elle didn't react to the message at first. She sent me a sleepy smile and then told me that she was going to grab a beer from the kitchen. What I didn't expect was for her to come back wielding one of her mom's butcher knives. I stepped back, but her eyes terrified me. Her entire body was trembling, fingers tightening around the handle. Her expression contorted with that same feral fear that I couldn't understand. L, I bit back a cry. Hey, it's me, it's Smith. Get out. She spoke through a sob. Her ponytail swung around when she twisted to the door. Please, I don't want to hurt you. She waved the knife manically and I raised my arms, my heart catapulting into my throat. You have 15 minutes. The voice drawled and Elle's expression hardened. I repeat, please lock all Geminis inside their rooms immediately and find a safe place. This warning will expire at 5 a.m., eight hours from now. A sudden bang outside set off my fight or flight, doors slamming and running footsteps. I found my eyes glued to the blade in my best friend's hand. They were serious about this. The Dean really had turned a whole campus of students against one singular star sign. Elle's frightened eyes found me and I lowered my arms. What are you going to stab me? I took a slow step back towards the door. Because I was born in May. I couldn't resist a laugh. You told me that you didn't care about the Zodiac. You said that all of this was BS, so why now? Another step and she squeaked. Do you want to fit in, Al? Is it like peer pressure? She didn't respond and that pissed me off even more. Al didn't know why she was afraid of me because her head had been filled with crap. 
I raised my arms in a mock surrender. Why are you looking at me like that? Al, I'm not going to hurt you. When have I ever? I didn't expect to cry, but my eyes were stinging. I could hear screaming Geminis being attacked and locked up. I risked a step back and her grip on the knife had changed, like she was ready to use it. You're brainwashed, I said slowly. The Dean wants you to be scared. She's crazy, Al, like delusional. She has some crazy vendetta against Geminis and she's punishing us. Al choked out a cry. Last month, she spoke through a sob. What if you got into my room? Al shook her head rapidly, squeezing her eyes shut. Just leave, she squeaked. I'm sorry, Smith. I'll explain, I promise, but you need to find someplace else. It can't be here. She smiled, but her lips were strained and her eyes were wide. When I moved to try and reassure her, she jumped back, like a deer caught in headlights. She was terrified of me. Lock yourself up, my friend said softly, and I realized that I had lost her. But don't hurt yourself, Al sniffled. They can climb through the windows and sense light. They follow it, so make sure to turn them off and stay down. Her expression darkened. Can you promise me something? I found myself nodding dizzily. Al squeezed her eyes shut. Don't look up. My gut twisted into tangled knots. What? Al's words had set off something inside me, but she was already dropping the knife and grabbing me gently and pushing me through the door. I was being shoved out into the hallway, my bags thrown in my face, when the alarms had started blaring, red lights swarming the hallways. I saw shadows darting in and out of rooms, others being shoved inside while retreating figures made for the elevators. A boy was violently dragged out by a girl and thrown on his butt. At that moment, I stopped seeing students, kids. I was seeing wild animals crawling backwards on their hands and knees, frightened eyes darting for a safe getaway. A girl ran into me, dropping onto her knees before catapulting into a sprint. She was caught by three guys who dragged her away, kicking and screaming. I had no choice. It was 7.50 when I found myself standing in front of the old building. Halfway across campus, the alarm still ringing in my ears. The dorm was more of a boarding house with maybe two or three floors. The night felt eerily still, a half moon poking from the clouds. There was something glued to the front of the door, a simple white sheet of paper. On it scrawled in permanent marker was, NO, in bold letters. The O was crossed, I had noticed, which was familiar. Five minutes. The intercom screeched and in my panic, I knocked three times. Hello? I banged again. Hey, can somebody let me in? I swallowed thickly. I'm a... Uh, my star sign tangled in my throat when there was a crash behind me and I twisted around. A group of students were dragging two others, bound and gagged, hauling them into a car trunk. With my stomach trying to projectile into my throat, I turned to knock again, finding my fist meeting something warm. There was a shadow standing in the doorway with warm golden light bleeding around him. I could barely see his face, only a mop of light reddish curls. He tugged the paper off the door and held it out. The handwriting stuck out. No means no, he said and moved to slam the door. I forced my heel in the way, blocking him. He tried to shut the door on my foot and in my panic, I shoved it back in his face. He didn't try again, but I made sure to not let my guard down. You told the dean about me, I hissed. I'm sorry, did we go back to sixth grade? He made a snorting noise. Well, look who's talking. What? The shadow paused before stepping out into the light. I glimpsed and narrowed eyes and freckles. I made a move to shove past him, but he stood stubbornly in the way. His eyes were shaded by a scuffed pair of Ray-Bans. Ah, yes, the traitor, he said, who was hiding in Sagittarius and didn't think that we would notice. 
he gestured behind him and something jingled. Looking closer, there was something metal attached to his wrist. And we turned your room into a panic room, by the way, he deadpanned. So like I said, the guy pointed to the stupid sign. No means no. His lips formed a spiteful smile and behind me, another crash. Something ice cold ran down my spine. I couldn't bring myself to turn to see more brutality. The guy had visibly stiffened up, nose flaring. He hiked his glasses up his nose, revealing eyes shadowed by an eerie glow slowly spreading across his pupil. His gaze followed mine. Another kid was being mercilessly dragged across the parking lot. When I turned back to the guy, his expression had darkened. He slid his glasses back into place with emphasis. Have fun locking yourself up, he said, saluting me with two fingers before stepping back. Another jingle and he flinched, and this time I saw it clearly. A rusted chain wrapped around his ankle and right wrist. The guy noticed me staring, lips curling into a skull. He stepped behind the door, clearly embarrassed. This is your two-minute warning. The intercom was still loud, even halfway across the grounds. Hearing the announcement, the kid gently kicked my foot out of the way, and I almost fell on my butt. Goodbye, was all that he said dryly, and he slammed the door a little too hard in my face. I could hear voices when I was shuffling back. I checked my phone. 7.58. Crap. Across campus, the warning lights were still flashing. Why did you do that? Another guy's voice hissed from behind the door. Because she's a traitor. Yeah, but she's stuck out there. A girl joined in. Aren't you being a little too harsh? Nope. I left them to argue, making it back onto campus. 7.59. Uh, bathroom. That was all that I could think of. I started toward the main building when movement flashed in the corner of my eye. I saw them pouring from campus illuminated in brilliant orange from the torches in their hands. Leo's. I recognized several faces from my class. They moved as one, a large group heading across campus toward the clearing in the woods. They wore pajamas, normal clothes like they were going to hang out. But something in the air and prickling across my skin told me different. There were exclusive clubs on campus, but this was a whole other level. I ducked, mapping a way to get on campus without being caught. If I could get to the door and make a clean break through the cafeteria, I could dive into the girls' bathroom next to the elevator. I dropped to my knees in an attempt to crawl when I saw her. The bright red hair was a giveaway. Her bobbing ponytail frenzied as she joined the others. L. Another frantic look at my phone. 802. I didn't expect her to see me. She was looking around frantically, unlike the others whose eyes were set forward. It looked like she was looking for a way out, staggering over uneven ground. And then her eyes found mine. Initially, Elle looked relieved, and then her gaze went to the sky, flicking back to me, her eyes widening. She hesitated before stumbling over to me, pulling something from her jeans pocket. It was a much sharper knife, the blade glinting under moonlight cast across the grounds. Tell me your name, she said in a squeak. I need to know it's you. I had half a mind to question her before I remembered the Gemini boy chained up. Smith, I'm, I'm Smith. Elle hesitated. She twisted around, scanning the night and turned back to me. Her frenzied eyes searched mine. What is my most embarrassing story? What? In two single strides, she was holding the knife to my throat, her hand trembling. The steel was cold and I had no doubt that she would impress deeper. Say it, Smith, word for word. Behind her, the Leos were gone with some stragglers left behind. I nodded slowly, trying to ignore the blade digging into my skin. This was my new normal. You, you had your period in your boyfriend's parents' new car, I whispered. You still have nightmares. 
Her expression crumbled with relief and she dropped the knife. How about mine? I urged her. Al surprised me with a quiet laugh. Now you barf tacos all over your crush on your first date, she choked out, and he never talked to you again. I started to speak and Elle tugged off her jacket, wrapping it around my eyes. At first, I fought back before her hands and then her fingernails dug into the bare flesh of my arms. Her touch was reassuring, dragging up my arms and then grasping a hold of my shoulders. I told you not to look up. Her voice came out in an annoyed hiss. I didn't, but I bit back a cry when she dug her nails in further. What's happening? I'll explain later. How can you guys tell who are the Gemini? I whispered. I don't get it. Elle didn't respond for a moment. Your eyes, she whimpered. It's in your eyes. What do you mean by that? Shush, Elle muttered. Just stay quiet, okay? Elle pulled me to my feet and I staggered blindly trying to balance myself. I'll take you to a bathroom, she breathed, shoving me forward. But if you tell anybody that I helped you, I won't. I tripped over something almost falling on my face. The further that we were getting, I could sense something. Light. It started as a pinprick behind my eyes before spreading. Bleeding light fraying through the material of Elle's jacket. There was one bright splodge of light and then another, and another. Speckled illuminations like glitter illuminating the night. Closer, they told me. I followed them almost giddily, watching them burn through Elle's jacket. When the sound of thundering footsteps sliced into me, I turned my head trying to sense where it was coming from. What's that? I didn't realize that I was laughing until manic giggles spurted from my lips. It was like being high and my thoughts bleeding into cotton candy. Suddenly, all I wanted was to see the lights. They felt so far away and yet also like I could reach them, plucking them straight out of the sky. I laughed again, my body a puppet as I reached out and tried to catch them on my palm. I said, be quiet. Al whisper shrieked. I am. I was curious about the light. It was so bright and I was missing out on fully taking it in. I stumbled again, this time my footsteps tangled. I didn't hear the voice until it was in my head. A whisper telling me to pull away the blindfold. It was choking me, suffocating my thoughts and filling me with the taste of her. I saw it, just a glimpse, dancing across my vision. I had my fingers clawing into Elle's jacket, ready to rip it off when someone else did it for me. Leo, what are you doing out here? The voice was familiar, but it was being drowned out. By its light, its song. I'm locking her up, Elle said shakily. Darkness made way for light and I blinked rapidly. I could sense my head tipping back and then Elle's fingers in my hair trying to shove my head down. Blinking rapidly, I saw the dean of the college and my best friend's pale face. And then I saw the stampede, as suffocated in shadow, silhouettes passing me, ethereal light illuminating otherwise vacant eyes. The lights resembled as stars themselves dancing through the night. It was the same light that was seeping into me. It felt cozy and warm, already ignited inside them. I could tell who they were from the attempt to lock themselves up. I glimpsed handcuffs around wrists, makeshift ropes still clinging to arms and ankles, duct tape over mouths. When my gaze followed the horde, I caught sight of a cuffed ankle, a stray chain trailing behind them, the guy who locked me out. He moved as slowly like a zombie. His glasses were awkwardly placed on the top of his head. Eyes drowned by that, that light. It was teasing me, seeping into me like honey. But it wasn't moonlight. I could glimpse the crescent glowing under the clouds. Gemini's. They were bathed in it, a swimming glow that I wanted to dive into. All of them. Where were they going? Unlike the Leos, their expressions were blank as they staggered along, akin to a crowd of zombies. 
I remember not being able to concentrate on the Geminis because something had a hold of me and it wasn't letting go. I felt it reach directly into the back of my head, phantom fingers taking me into its grasp. I didn't mean to look up, I tiptoed my head back, drinking in the sky above me in the night that suddenly felt alive. The Gemini horde stopped suddenly head-stepping back, glowing eyes following suit. I blinked twice and Elle was already covering my eyes, and I wrenched her hands away so that I could see clearly. I could feel it, sense it consuming me, filling my thoughts with a lulling fog. Smith! Elle's eyes found mine and she dropped to her knees. It was like she was scared of me. I remember her lips had formed the words in breathy sobs. Don't look. Before she could reach up, I blinked again, and this time it was a longer one. I started toward something. It was there, I just had to reach as high as I could, and then I would be able to touch it. Starry eyes surrounded me, but I don't remember being scared. Elle's cry rattled in my skull as I felt my body lurch on its own, driven by something else, a sentient thing inside me. I could feel my mind filling with fog. It told me to go to sleep, and I did. When I came to, it was no longer night. Artificial white light buzzing above me. The first thing that I felt was something wet oozing down my chin, and then cool porcelain pressed against my cheek. I was in a bathroom stall, my head stuck down a toilet bowl. But it was different to waking up hungover. I felt filthy. My body was aching, a striking pain rippling across the back of my head. When I lifted my neck slightly, a snapping sound made me jump, like my bones were popping back into place. My memory was gone and my thoughts were a whirlwind lost to the dark. I could still see Elle's face illuminated in that startling light. The shadowy horde around me, starry eyes burning into me. And then there was nothing. The familiar ice-cold grays of porcelain greeted me when I pried my eyes open. There was something in my stomach and I spat it out, expecting stale barf. What I wasn't expecting was a wet piece of flesh to splash down into the bowl. It took me several seconds to realize the toilet bowl that I had my head down was not empty. In the flickering light from the broken light fixture above me, I saw the glistening red first, spattered on the lid. And when I looked down on the floor too, it was staining my knees. And then I saw all of it. The bulgy, slimy red mess sticking from the bowl. I lurched back and something was stuck at the back of my throat. I reached into my mouth cringing and pulled out what looked like a mauled finger, skin to flesh. There was only spiky pieces of bone fragments clinging to shredded muscle. Something inhuman croaked from my lips and I slammed my hands over my mouth, my gut twisting. I looked up, red. I looked down, more red. Vivid and wet and recent. I was covered in dirt and grass stains, my legs bloodied and bruised, and half my hair ripped out. The walls around me were the same shade, glistening, pooling, disgusting red, dripping and staining every surface. The lumpy red mass sticking from the toilet bowl suddenly looked less like a mass, the more that I was looking at it, blinking through blinding light. At some point I screamed, heaving up the rest wet globules of fat spilling from my mouth. There was a head in the toilet bowl stuck right under, like I had been trying to hide the evidence. The head didn't look like a head, half of its skull crushed, but I could still make out familiar features. Eyes still wide open, lips frozen in what looked like a scream. The rest of her had presumably been flushed but I could still see pieces of her clinging to the rim of the toilet. L. Oh God, I killed my best friend. I'm still sitting here and I can't bring myself to move. Normal college life still goes on outside and I can't understand how. I ask this as a Gemini, preferably on campus, but this goes for all of you. 
Did any of you kill and eat somebody last night with no memory of doing so? I'm starting to think the Gemini constellation is something more than a group of stars after all. I think it's alive. 